<laughs> okay, welcome to lesson three. Hopefully that uh, everyone just decided to kind of take a bit of a breather day today and looked at the notes and realized that it was perfectly fine and it's not a problem with the Google Meet link. Um, but we're looking at the living things idea that's going to kind of propel us through this entire unit, as well as the cell theory revolving around that concept. So when we look at biology and the study of life and living things, we're talking about cells, specifically all organisms made of them, from all the way from the single cell organisms all the way up until the multi-cell organisms, just like humans. Uh, so the characteristics of a living thing implies that all organisms need to obtain and use energy. They need to keep a consistent internal environment, which is called homeostasis. They need to reproduce either sexually or asexually, and they are made out of cells as well as the constituents and the products of those cells. Uh, one of the constituents that we'll talk about quite often are organelles. They're the specialized structures that kind of take care of the cell and perform all necessary functions of that cell. So the idea that cells are built off of um, or that living organisms are built up of, of cells, uh, subscribes to the idea of cell theory or the theory of cell. And in the cell theory, it states that there are three main important concepts, that all living things are made of cells. The cell is the simplest form of life. There's nothing more simpler or simplified than the cell itself in terms of a living thing. And all cells come from other cells. There are two types of cells that make up organisms, prokaryotic, like the bacteria that grow in our hand, and eukaryotic, like the cells that make up humans and other animals. So when looking at prokaryotes, they are the simplest cell, they are the oldest cell, and we know they are the oldest cell because they have a specific genetic markers or sequences that kind of show that it is truly very old. And one of those things is that they lack a nucleus, and that lack of nucleus as well as advanced parts of the cell shows its age as we look back into the history of cells. And like I said, some examples are bacteria, and another one that we'll talk about is archaea. Eukaryotes are the more complex cells, and they can exist as either single-celled organisms or multi-celled organisms. So there are some single-celled organisms that are very, very simplified, and they, they seek out other single-cell organisms for food. And then there are the most complex multi-cell organisms, such as humans and other animals. Uh, they have more complex internal organizations. The nucleus is, uh, is the kind of the headquarters of all the information and all the, the necessary required cellular function directions that the cell has. And it also has many other different cell parts, which you learned about in grade nine. There are plants, animals, and fungi and protists are all the different types of eukaryotic cells. So just in terms of this flowchart with regards to living things, you also have a Venn diagram, which I'll get to as well. But organisms are broken down into two main categories, prokaryotic or eukaryotic. Prokaryotic are like bacteria and archaea. Eukaryotic can be either single or multicellular with their constituent examples below. And then this is just the answer key with regards to the Amoeba Sisters video that you should hopefully watch. Um, and other than that, that's pretty much the gist of this lesson. If you do have questions, please do not hesitate to contact me and let me know, and I'll be more than happy to answer those questions. Otherwise, enjoy the beautiful weather, and have a good weekend.